Hey guys, how's it going? I was improving OpenJDK a bit by replacing IO API by NIO API and this video will be a deep dive into the source code. Actually, uh, video number one of two because we had to split it into two videos, one for JDK 8 and one with more changes for JDK 11, so stay tuned for the next episode actually. Recently I made a contribution to Eclipse Jersey to make the IO performance even better and certainly it is basing on my experience with my contribution to Open JDK itself. And I did it in two steps. The first step was that I changed Jersey in a way to use modern NIO API instead of old school IO. So um, it will be compatible with, um, so it still will be compatible with Java 8. And in the second step, I implemented the actual performance optimization. And in this video, we will talk about step number one which is um, still working on Java 8, is not the full performance optimization, but still brings some kind of performance by using more effective code under the hood inside OpenJDK. And I want to deep dive into that code so you can see how you can modify your existing applications to uh, benefit from changes inside of OpenJDK. I already explained several times in uh, in my videos and in my live talks that uh, using the NIO API instead of the IO API allows OpenJDK to come up with improved implementations without the need to modify your code later. So while your code stays the same, just by replacing old Java by new Java runtime, you will gain better IO performance or higher efficiency, which means the same speed for less CPU cycles. Or in other words, for less power, or in other words, for less CO2. So what did I do? Um, I actually modified 27 files, but what I did is always the same. So let's just go uh, over these lines and you will see or get some ideas what you can do in uh, your own code. So certainly we need to change the imports, right? So here's the first change and you can see that what you do, what, what you should do always is don't go with the new keyword followed by a constructor. This one enforces that you always get explicitly an instance of this class, of this exact class. So we, we the, the only chance to improve it is to change the, the constructor. But what happens if the decision of the OpenJDK team is that, that they have a pool of objects to spare creation time? You will not have this benefit here. Also, sometimes they need to replace classes because they change packages. If you go with the constructor, you always stick to this class in this package and you don't have the benefit they provide for you for free. So tip number one, always replace the constructor by a factory method. Do this always. If, if OpenJDK provides a factory method, always use that one. Really, th this is a great tip and it, it has nothing to do with IO or NIO. You, you have that all over OpenJDK that you have a choice between uh, a constructor or a factory method. Always choose the factory method. Always. There is no exception to the rule. The second thing is that the new API uh, has the notion of a path. So we create a path here. Um, the benefit is over a file. A path is really a lightweight uh, object that solely stores an abstract path. So, so a description where the object is that you want to handle. Nothing else. A file is deeply interconnected 
with the IO system. So there is a lot of stuff going on inside a file that has nothing to do with the only address, but maybe has to do with, with the content of the file or its encoding or like that. So if you just want to pass around an address where a file resides, then always go with a path. By the way, never go with a string. A string is a string. It, you have you have no check if that is a valid address. If you have a path in your hand, then you can be pretty sure that this is really an address and not just a string. So in, in the sense of type safety, always go with a path. And by the way, don't recreate paths. There is no need to recreate a path. You can just create a path once and hold it in your hand and use it forever. So a path is really lightweight. So th these are the tips from this line. Use factory methods, but not con uh, constructors. Use paths and handle paths around instead of strings, never use files. So I, I did that in several locations. So here's the next change. The original Jersey code um, contributed um, a constant for UTF-8 and later OpenJDK added a con uh, uh, and later OpenJDK came up with their own um, constant so it makes no sense to have both we go with the new one this is tip number two if OpenJDK comes up with something that you reinvented or th th that you have also in your code drop your own stuff always go with the open jdk stuff as as soon as they come up with something that you already have drop yours don't ignore open jdk always go with open jdk you're always better off because their code is optimized their code uh, maybe is is better on on different platforms. Maybe has less bugs. It is reviewed by by a really huge team, and um, it, it is bug fixed very very extensively because they have millions of uses of that code you don't have. So always go with their code, even if it's just a constant. So we deprecated some stuff. We can we can skip that. It's just internal things. Do we find more changes? Yeah, this is an interesting change. Um, they they wrote some code for copying content um, of files. So uh, we we have a rather lengthy handwritten custom code, and I replaced that by files.copy from OpenJDK. Because files.copy not only is shorter uh, and is uh, provided by OpenJDK, which is always better than handwritten code, in my opinion at least, um, it has another benefit. Files.copy internally is not really copying any bytes. Files.copy is asking the operating system to ask the file system to do the copy. So you don't have to pass all the bytes all into the Java virtual machine just to push it back from the Java virtual machine to your file system. Files.copy is much, much faster than any code you could write on your own because it internally is effectively written in C. Not completely, but the, the essential parts are C language calls into the operating system. And I doubt you have that too. I assume you have, you have something similar like this one where you effectively looped around bytes or byte arrays. So this is a big tip. Go with files.copy. Don't write byte or array moving code. It really performs much better. So uh, the same is here for the other direction. So uh, are there more tips that I can give to you? Let's see. Yeah, here something, it's not a big deal, but 
Um, in OpenJDK, you often have a met uh, method overrides with diverse parameters, and it makes not much sense to to use an explicit one if there is an implicit one. What does it mean? If you look into this method in OpenJDK, you will see that it effectively does this. So it's it's for convenience. Now, the original authors of this code thought that if they don't go with the convenience, but go with, with the actual target, they will have a benefit. Actually, they don't. Um, the, the, the Java virtual machine is such clever that it notices that this is just a, a, a detour to this one and will directly inline this. So there's really no performance benefit, there, there is no efficiency benefit. If you do this, you just have more possibility to do it wrong, like giving here a one or a minus one or giving here uh, the wrong length, like S length plus one or S length minus one or something like that. So. This is really error prone, while this is bulletproof. So, as as you now know that you don't have any benefit from copying the behavior of the JDK outside of the JDK, just go with the original JDK code and you're done. That there is no, there's no benefit from looking into this method and copy what it is doing internally. What we have here, yes, uh, another one, this one. As I said, always go with, um, I already said always go with the factory methods, if there are factory methods, and this particular factory method, by the way, what it's doing is that um, it creates an output stream, which is looking up its data, from a file which finds by a path, but it's doing this in a highly optimized way. It uses the channel API internally to directly talk um, to the file system's channels. So this can do, or, or the result of this call, can do its job much more efficiently than this original class. So if you're interested in the difference of this class and the result of this class, go into the source code of OpenJDK. It's, it's really interesting to read what the differences are. It's interesting to see that, that the, the difference creates performance differences. Yeah, and we copied that pattern several times. We don't want to have hand-created objects. Same here. So this this happens in a lot of files. I just have to check if I see more tips I can give to you. By the way, this one, the pass.get method, this is from JDK 7. You have it from 7 in 8 and 9 and so on. And uh, it's, today in, in the modern JDK, like 11, 17 or 21, this is just a D2 to path dot off. So now you have to decide if you write code, will I go with path dot get or, or with path dot off? From the, from the viewpoint of an author that writes new code for the future, always go with JDK twenty one, always go with path dot off. If your code has to work in an earlier JDK, then you're absolutely done with path.get. It, it exactly provides the same performance. There is no much big difference. So what do we have next? Scroll, scroll, scroll. This is all the same. It's all the same. As you can see, code reviews can be quick just by comparing. This is the same change. You don't have to discuss it, discuss it uh, a lot of times. It's always the same. Always the same. 
So as you can see, it's a lot of work, but it's no rocket science, right? You can, you can make your code faster just by applying the same solution a lot of times. By the way, the buffered reader, as you can see here, it was rather complex um, to create a buffered reader that is reading UTF, uh, UTF-8 encoded files. This is much easier in modern Java because files dot new buffered reader is creating exactly the same like this one, but with a lot of less code. Um, we have three classes here and we have one class here. So um, it works faster and is more efficient because the implementation is actually optimized by um, the, the OpenJDK internal C code directly talking with the operating system. You don't need this one actually because you already get a buffered reader right in a single shot. So more code, this is always the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, it's all the same. No, here's the next one. Um, trusted for name and then a string. This was the only way to do it some years back, but meanwhile the OpenJDK comes with the standard char sets and the standard char sets already have uh, the ISO A8591 constant. So why is this one better than that one? It's it's pretty easy. This one is a ready to use char set. You just reference it. It's an object, it resides in, in memory. It's it's already there, you can just use it. You, it. It doesn't make any effort for the Java runtime to give you this char set. Always go with this one. This one, the older one, had to to check up by by string comparison. String comparison is slow, actually. Um, you, you have to compare byte by byte. Um, if the difference is in the last position, then you really wait for a long time because you do not compare it once. You compare all the existing names of all the existing char sets, right? Yes, certainly you have a hash uh, code and you can speed up things, I know. But essentially you have to, to compare byte by byte a lot of times. So this is slow. This is quick. This makes the Java runtime a lot of work and a lot of work is a lot of power consumption, a lot of heat, a lot of cooling, a lot of cost, a lot of CO2. This is a ready to use instance, no costs, no hustle in the JRE, no power cycles, no heat, no cooling, no CO2. Well, to, to make it in plain words, always go with this one, never ever do this one. This one has only one reason to still exist, this is backwards compatibility or if you want, well, that's the second reason, certainly, um, if this name comes from data. So if, if you don't know upfront at programming what your, what your uh, char set is like. So you have a parameter file or you have a database where ISO 8591 is data inside the database. Then you need this, but only then. So please swear that you never will use again char set for name unless it's for backward compatibility or um, you you really have this string stored somewhere. And I copied this also a lot of times. So th these are all small changes. This is really, as I said, it's not a rocket science, but in sum, it provides performance, it provides efficiency, and uh, it helps the climate. Yeah, what we have here is, yeah, the reader. Th this is something I or see often. In old code, I don't know why, people tend to write the exact same type here they have here. I can remember that it, it was a best practice someday to use the same class because somebody noticed that it's a, a bit faster by not using an interface here. 
I don't know if that was ever true, but even if it was, it's not true today. So the JDK, uh, sorry, the, the, the JRE is so fast that it makes no measurable difference for a normal application, unless you do high-speed programming, yeah? But an, a normal application has no benefit these days. So what you should do here is, I would say, go with the walk keyword always. And unless you have a good reason not to use the walk keyword, always go with the walk keyword. All new code I wrote is using the walk keyword ever. Unless it's not my project like here and I want to still have no walk keyword. So um, this is Java 8 code. So I cannot use the walk keyword. But then I use an interface. And if if they would have used the interface right from the start, right here, then there would be no change. The change here is needed because this one is not creating a file reader. It's creating a reader from a file, which is something different, which is more efficient, has more power under the hood. This is old and slow. This is new and fast. But this does not guarantee that you get a file reader because a file reader is a class. You get a reader, which is an interface. So my big tip for, for easier changing your code in the future, always go with the war keyword unless there is a good reason and then go with an interface. Don't go with a class. Okay, same, same, same. Yeah, that's it, guys. That was how many? There was 27 classes. And as you can see, you, you can easily understand what it's doing. The code is, is more comprehensible. It's easier to read, easier to maintain. It's shorter. It compiles faster. It has a faster runtime. It has a better, um, it is more efficient. It's better for the climate. You need a smaller server. It just has benefits. So, if if you if you have the chance to modify your existing applications, take that chance. Go down the route. Replace all I/O code by NIO code. And really, don't tell me th that it's too early. This was started in Java seven, which is a decade ago. We have Java twenty one now. Yeah. So. It's really time to overhaul your code. And if you write new code, never ever use files, never ever use uh, like sockets directly. Always go with the factory methods and let OpenJDK decide what technology is used under the hood. So far for today, I hope you liked this video as much as I did. Stay safe and as always, party on.